Hello everybody, my name is Jonathan Reeves from Innovative Vectorworks BIM. Today we're going to look at round two of AutoCAD versus Vectorworks. We're going to talk about 2D presentation and 3D presentation using those two bits of software for this round. So first up we're going to talk about the 2D graphics for AutoCAD and basically have a quick look at the kind of graphical capabilities the software can provide. Now, when you look at most of the drawings that you see on AutoCAD, you generally know associate it with a black background and coloured lines. The reason for this is basically with AutoCAD, rather than drawing with line weights, you draw with different colours and those colours are associated to different line weights. Um, so it's kind of quite a technical way to adapt to drafting. Um, you can basically kind of work out what the heavier lines are by looking at, for example, the red would be the heavier line for the walls. Probably the pink here is going to be a lighter line weight for things like the windows and maybe another line weight for things like the furniture and so on. So that definitely is why often you see uh, AutoCAD users drawing on a black background because the line weights don't really show and they need the color to distinguish those line weights. But otherwise, in terms of graphics, Vector, uh, AutoCAD is pretty capable um, and it can kind of knock out good line drawings and so on. However, you know, it's not so good at doing sort of graphical things that you would try and get from say Photoshop or InDesign. Now, for me, this is where Vectorworks does excel. Um, basically, here is a drawing that I did back in 2000 when I did some work in Sydney. So that's uh, 20 years ago, working on a project where we were uh, three of us working in a big team. And we'll talk about the referencing features later. But even back then, you can see the 2D graphics in Vectorworks were pretty cool. Um, and actually, funny enough, because I've been working in 3D for so long, I was struggling to find more 2D drawings that I've done. But one, do, one of the really nice things with Vectorworks these days is you have full control over things like uh, color, hatches, line weights, opacity, even things like drop shadow as well. So you do have the full range of, of capabilities. I mean, obviously Auto had, has really good hatching and those kind of things, but it doesn't quite have such good support for image files, um, things like drop shadows and opacity are a lot more tricky to achieve. So for me, um, I'm gonna give AutoCAD a score of six for 2D graphics. Um, basically Vectorworks for me, very, very superior 2D graphics. Um, we're gonna give that a score of eight. So for the next part of this video, we're gonna be talking about 3D modeling and rendering. So AutoCAD does now have a 3D side. Um, it has some basic sort of primitive tools like spheres and kind of extrudes and so on. Um, but really it does focus more on the 2D side as an application. So the 3D side is a little basic in that, you know, um, not many people kind of that I know as architects use the 3D side of AutoCAD. They tend to find that they use SketchUp or some of their 3D software with AutoCAD for 2D, maybe SketchUp for 3D and then maybe a renderer. Um, so yeah, we'll kind of take a look at some of the features of the 3D AutoCAD. Um, but in terms of 3D for Vectorworks, um, as I said before, I've been using 3D Vectorworks for, well, my whole career. And personally, I find it a very flexible, really robust and really easy to use modeling system. The great thing with Vectorworks has a very sort of scalable amount of detail that you can add um, via sort of things like 3D symbols. Plus you can reference to break up your model so you can manage it in layers and classes. So that makes things a lot easier when you're doing really complex models like this. This was a project I did a few years ago. Um, the other thing that I really like about Vectorworks, it does have a very good renderer built in. It's called Renderworks. This is actually based on the Cinema 4D rendering engine. It's like a cut down version of Cinema 4D straight in your rendering application. And the quality of the renders you can get are pretty decent. Um, maybe isn't the fastest renderer in the world, but you can get some great output quite straightforwardly. And I use OpenGL rendering an awful lot and get some nice output for the clients without doing too much more. So in summary, Vectorworks has not only all the freeform modeling tools you would expect, um, push, pull, sort of lathe, extrude, twist, all these things. Um, because it works from your 2D drawings and you can extrude them and then edit them, um, it does make modeling up buildings quite flexible. But we do also have some really advanced 3D modeling tools, such as NURBS 3D modeling. Also site modeling is a whole nother thing we'll talk about in another video perhaps. But finally, we also have now sub-primitive type modeling, which is kind of like the equivalent of Rhino. So for me, Vectorworks wins hands down. It gives a, a really good score of seven. Um, AutoCAD, I'm afraid it only give, give that two because the rendering and the modeling is pretty poor without some extras. 
So definitely um, on the 3D side, the movement from 2D to 3D, Factorworks is the winner there. So for the third part of this talk, we're going to be looking at the BIM capabilities of AutoCAD and Vectorworks. Now this might seem a little unfair because really AutoCAD, to be honest, doesn't really have any proper BIM capabilities. It has basic 3D, but it doesn't have the information sort of holding requirements that you need in a BIM application. Um, obviously with AutoCAD, it's very compatible with other software like AutoCAD Architecture and particularly Revit. So Autodesk are very keen for you to move from AutoCAD to Architecture or particularly the Revit tool when you want to look at doing BIM workflows. However, with Vectorworks, as well as the 2D and excellent 3D modeling and rendering, um, it does actually come with a full suite of BIM tools. So with Vectorworks Architect, it's quite possible to document the building both in 2D, 3D and using building information modeling processes. Uh, Vectorworks can actually import IFC files and export those as well. So we also have compatibility with Revit Direct Import and also Direct Export via Vectorworks 2020 these days. So I really recommend the BIM capabilities of Vectorworks. I think it's a really nice approachable side. Um, you can kind of start from your 2D graphics, you can work up your 3D ideas, and then when you're ready, you can actually basically adopt a BIM methodology at any point of the workflow. There's nothing to stop you from starting off in a BIM workflow as well. Um, but you know, kind of like you can access the BIM tools pretty much from any point. And that's one of the reasons I love the fact that it's BIM side. It's just really approachable and user friendly. That's one of the really big advantages I think with Vectorworks. It kind of makes it scalable so that people can actually get into it um, with you know relatively minimal learning. Now don't get me wrong, I definitely recommend some training when you're looking at BIM because it is a lot lot harder than 2D modeling but you do get so much more from it. Um, you can kind of see how you can get fully sets of coordinated drawings plus all the other information like things like the scheduling and takeoffs and spreadsheets. Uh, doors and window schedules and area schedules that kind of thing too so yeah if you're really interested in a nice sort of easy to use user-friendly BIM capability then check out Vectorworks for sure so I'm going to give AutoCAD zero unfortunately for the BIM capability but I do think Vectorworks deserves a score of eight for its BIM capabilities okay Revit has some more sophisticated tools and some extra plugins in some ways but it is pretty complicated and the beauty of Vectorworks is it's approachable and can be used by absolutely everybody so yeah I think we'll declare Vectorworks the winner in this round so make sure you join us in the next video where we're going to look at ease of use maintenance and resources and object libraries